everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconry video. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about heat management and water and things that don't sound important or exciting but are very vital to uh, proper falconry and proper care and upkeep of raptors or birds of any kind. Uh, now, uh, if you haven't already, if you could please hit subscribe, I very much appreciate it. Helps me keep this channel up and going and I appreciate all your comments as well. I try to respond to them as soon as I can. Now, uh, I'm in Utah, I'm in the Wasatch Mountains today because it's like a million degrees down in the valley. It is so hot. And I wanted to get out and escape a little and go up in elevation, it gets cooler down. So I'm up here in some nice filtered shade among some maple trees and box elder trees. And I uh, saw a sharp chinned hawk fly overhead. Uh, there's a lot of birds, a lot of insects. Uh, keep trying to get the insects to go away. But I wanted to come up here because I'm like, I'm hot. And I wanted to talk about that. I want to talk about heat with our birds. Now it's easy, of course, uh, proper upkeep, proper husbandry and care of a raptor is uh, pretty straightforward. And if you're in the United States, there's books, there's laws, there's, there's regulations on how to keep them. But I want you to think in general, okay? In the wild, our birds, uh, they can go wherever they want. They can go in the shade, they can go in the water, they can go in the mountains, they can go up higher elevation and have cooler air. They can do what they want. If you have a bird in any sort of an enclosure, inside of your house, outside, in a mew, in a weathering area, wherever it is, it is kind of isolated wherever you're keeping it. So it's really vital that you make sure its needs are met, especially in the heat of the summer. Because not just about temperature, it's also about airflow shade i am enjoying this filtered shade right now if i was uh under the if i was at the same elevation the same temperature right now but in a tent with the open sun or a mew with the open sun it's not going to be the same as a filtered shade and that's kind of why i'm thinking about the subject today birds of prey require water all life does you may not know this but about 90 percent of your body is water uh, all the way down to the cellular level, like 90% of a cell is water. We need water to survive, we need water to function for, for every process we have. Uh, now that being said, the opposite is also true. Uh, about 80 to 90% of your, um, your body's metabolizing food and converting it into energy just goes to staying warm-blooded. But the problem is, um, uh, motorcycle riding up the cane, I don't know if you're that, uh, the sounds of nature. But the problem is, we need to dissipate heat. Like me, I'm a, I'm a big guy, uh, I got hair, I'm a mammal, I'm wearing clothes, uh, it's, it's, it's 100 degrees outside. Okay, well, how do I dissipate that heat? Well, I came into the shade. What do raptors do? How do they dissipate heat? I'm, I'm a little bit sweaty right now. That's one way our body will give up some of its water, some of its moisture to sweat that out. Well, birds, that's not how they do it. They have a few ways. First of all, most birds have bare legs and bare legs allow them to dissipate heat. There's blood vessels that run up and down those ankles, those legs, those, uh, sorry, not the ankles, but we, we, we would think of them as ankles, but they're not. Those bones and those skin, that area, that region on any bird is very thin and the blood vessels that course through there help dissipate heat outward. So that's just one way in general. That's why birds poof up their legs at night or in the cold, they poof up their legs and poof up their, their tummy feathers and cover their legs to hide and cover and insulate those legs when you want to trap heat. When you want to dissipate heat, you're going to, uh, you're going to make your chest feathers go really slick down and let those legs be fully exposed to dissipate heat. Now, birds also squat. Almost all birds are in a squatting position and their femurs uh, are almost uh, horizontal. So birds can also stand taller to dissipate that heat. Uh, mo most people don't realize how tall birds really are, and it's usually you only see it when a bird is alarmed, when it's scared and uh, suddenly it stretches full height and you're like, Where, how did this bird get so tall so fast? Um, that, that can also be used to dissipate heat. But what do you need to do as a falconer, as a zookeeper, as a wildlife educator, somebody caring for a raptor, what do you need to do? Well, first of all, you need to make sure they always have access to water. Now, water is not only for drinking, but also for bathing. And bathing has multiple purposes. Most birds of prey do not just go down to the water and drink. They stand in the water and they drink. Now, standing in the water, first of all, as I was doing when I was walking up here, I was walking in the river and it cooled off my feet because that, that water took away the heat flowing through my legs. Same thing with a bird. If a bird stands in the water, then that helps cool them off. 
Getting a drink, of course, getting cool water inside of you also helps you cool off, but the bathing is also an important part. Birds of prey, when raptors, when they bathe, they're very specific about it. They have different ways of doing it, and part of it is to, they'll bend down and, and, and pick up water in their feathers. They don't wanna to be totally drenched, usually. They'll just dip some water in, dip some water in, shake it off, dip some water, shake it off. They want to get the right amount of water that when they step out, it evaporates off of them. It evaporates out and takes that heat with them. Uh, but it is also very vital. Feathers don't last forever. Raptors, uh, they molt every year. They get a new set of feathers every year. And in that process, part of that process is um, re repairing and restoring what was lost. You know, anything that's mucked up or broken or damaged during the year, you molt, you get a new feather, great but you still have a whole year before that happens. And so to keep feathers in good condition, raptors need to bathe. Soaking up water into those feather shafts helps straighten them if they are bent and helps keep the integrity of them going. They do dry out, they are subject to full spectrum radiation from the sun breaking them down. And so it's really crucial that they can absorb that water as well. So in captivity, you got a bird, you have a bath pan of some kind, um, some birds are very, very particular about it. I found this particularly true with passage raptors. Uh, passage raptors, uh, especially red-tailed hawks. The first bird's a red-tailed hawk. You're gonna be hard pressed for whatever reason to get it to be willing to drink and, and uh, take water in front of you or from a bath pan. I don't know why that is. So what do you do? How do you keep them hydrated? Well, you still make sure that bath pan is there. You never know, they might go drink uh, from it or take a bath uh, when you're not there. Um, one thing you can do also, I will mist my birds. I'll spray, uh, just a little sprayer, just get one of those little pump sprayers and you can mist your bird, help that suck into the feathers and absorb. Uh, in bad conditions, you can spray them. I've had some golden eagles that were just so cantankerous, never wanted to take a bath, and I just to do a, a gentle spray on them with a hose and soak them down and they loved it. They're like, oh yeah, this is great. It's like, yeah, why don't you do that on your own? Uh, but there's another secret as well. In, and that is part of it is not just absorbing water into your feathers, but consuming it. It's vital for cellular repair, for cellular growth. Everything within the body requires water. And in order, if you're gonna have that, if your bird is not drinking water or you're worried about it, uh, especially during the molt, during the summer is when these birds molt. And when they're growing new feathers, they need a lot of water. If they're not getting it, they're not gonna molt properly, their feathers are not gonna grow in at all, or they're gonna grow in all wonky and, and crummy. You need to make sure they're well hydrated. So what I do uh, in the summer, I always do this even if my bird is willing to drink. When I go to bring them their daily food, first I take a, like a little bowl of, of cold water, I put the food in it and let it sit there for you know a couple minutes, take it out to them, give that to them then and there. So they are for sure consuming uh, liquid with their food. Now the food is already gonna have a certain amount of liquid in it, but I want to up that level to help the birds with that. So it's really crucial whatever you can do. Also, always be aware. Uh, don't ever think, well, I'm, I, you know, I live in a desert region. This is a desert bird, it's fine. You always have to be aware. Airflow is crucial. Uh, I like to put fans in my muse on the edge to have airflow going through. Uh, my muse all right now all have, they're all under a box elder tree, which is the same kind right above me. <laughs> this, is, this is the kind of tree I have in my yard. I have a giant, giant box elder tree and that offers a lot of shade, but it still traps heat. In the summer, there's still heat and so I'll have fans, box fans on the edge to help keep air flowing. And I might come in and miss the birds a few times a day. Now, some birds like a jeer falcon, I'll do, I'll do this for golden eagles too. Golden eagles have booted legs which means that uh, that part of their leg that's normally bare on most birds, it's got feathers. There's other booted birds like that. Uh, Ferruginous hawks are the same way. Rough-legged hawks, there's a, there's a lot of species. Ornate hawk eagles, they're the same way. Ornates have big old booted legs. It's very hot, they don't have that heat dissipation. And so one of the things I like to do is I like to provide an ice block. When you're getting to these uh, horrible, temp extreme summer temperatures, make sure the water's there, but I'll just get a full size, you know, big old block of ice and just put it in there let them stand on it I'll put it next to their perch and uh, a lot of my jeer falcons all love to stand on it and they'll just it'll melt and just they just scoot down into it uh, but it gives them a chance and if they jump on it it just helps because the feet and the legs are the primary heat dissipation for a bird they can also pant if you see a bird panting 
that is its way because it will stick its tongue out. Its tongue is covered with liquid uh, and its tongue sticks out in a way, you'll see it if you see a bird doing it. They have kind of like a hooked tongue that helps them pull food back down in. And so that, uh, that, that sticking that tongue out lets it evaporate off just like a swamp cooler, lets it evaporate as it's panting and running air past, it's letting it evaporate and dissipate heat off, which is another really, that's their natural way of doing it. But you make sure that where you locate your mew works, you make sure, ah, the bugs are getting me. <laughs> you make sure that you have good cover, good shelter, and a really well covered mew isn't always good. In the summertime, most of my birds, the mews I have are very open. Like uh, some of my birds that are on tethered like a falcon that I'll have uh, uh, tied to a block perch, I'll have like a doggy, uh, a dog kennel, dog big, big old huge dog run. And I cover the top and the sides with uh, just that, that bamboo siding. So there's total airflow. And then you stick a fan in the corner and that just makes it so there's airflow and that can help them get through it. But just no matter what method you use, make sure that you absolutely keep your birds super hydrated and has access to food, has access to cool water, and make sure that you change that water out so it doesn't go all bad or, or, or septic. Um, and make sure that uh, if you have to, you, you could soak the bird's food in water to give it to them to make sure that no matter what, they're getting the moisture they need in the summer. Because sometimes just being in captivity changes their behavior and they might not be willing to bathe, and that's what you gotta do. So anyways, uh, just I was just thinking of these brief thoughts, just wanted to share them today since uh, I was super hot and I thought, you know what, so were the birds. Might as well do that as a subject. I uh, thought I'd come up here and talk about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts or questions. Share any techniques down below that you like to do to help keep your bird hydrated. And as always, happy hawking. Mm -hmm.